How's it guys? Look what the cat dragged in. Am I spoiled or what? Um, from La Scala's to Cornwall's to the Nines, um, I'm becoming a real Clips Heritage fanboy. There's something about their speakers. Goosebumps again. Just amazing. So I can't wait to unbox these Cornwall's and see what they're all about. I actually think, but I want to test them properly first. These will be more my speed because of the closed ported cabinets to have a bit more low down. Because these dig down quite a bit more than the La Scala. But I don't think it's going to have the La Scala's top end. But proof is in the pudding. So let's get to unboxing these. They are still big, but they are smaller than the La Scala. So at least one can unbox these by yourself. Hopefully. Let's see. Again, same as with the La Scala. Um, packed in this high density foam for super protection. Like so. And same as the La Scala, and I think all of the Heritage products, you get this Heritage booklet that comes inside with just all the paperwork and niceties um, and the little, I see there's little feet on here. We'll see what these are for now. Um, like I say, first time unboxing these. So let's get into it. Let's see. So. Like always, let's roll them. I'm going to just move this box up a bit more. Still a very, 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 very heavy speaker. <laughs> yeah. Okay, starting to come. Okay, get that flat. Whew. Work out and a half. At least one can do this by yourself. The La Scala, there's no way you can do it by yourself. So, plastic around nicely the bottom of the cabinet these are all hand built in Arkansas there you go Hope Arkansas crafted with pride so let's get this off so at the bottom they have these metal type of little feet I saw on the La Scala as well but I don't like them too much. Now I wonder, maybe that is what um, the plastic or the rubber plugs are for to have a bit of a more rubbery base. Let's, let's see. Let's see, let's open this book. So just, just a Cornwall booklet. Okay, let's see if they tell us anything in here. Okay, they show B2 to unbox, but I just proved you can do it by one. Okay, binding posts, how to buy wire. Nothing about those plastic feet. What's the rest of this? Uh, here we go. Additional unpacking instructions. Grill shipping protectors. Congratulations on your purchase. And the certificate of authenticity. So I can't really see where these need to go. That's the only thing that makes sense to me. But now I don't want to stick them down. And that's not where they're supposed to go. So I'm not going to use them for now. 
let me unbox them first properly check out everything before i stick something somewhere and then i need to take it off again later and then the sticky the stickiness value has decreased um yeah forgive me guys i am extremely ocd as all of you know by now so let me see how are we going to do this i'm going to leave a bit of plastic on the side so we don't damage the speaker in the next in the next roll so again this is the black ash veneer i would love to have a set in walnuts but every time the opportunity comes by for me to have some of these it's always in black so you know it is a heritage product so you don't say no but I would love to have a set in walnut one day. Maybe one day. We shall see. Okay, let's get this off. We can put this back in the box. Okay, now we can get this plastic off. Luckily, there's not much to it. Um, the Lascola was a two-piece. This is a one-piece affair. There we go. Absolutely beautiful black veneer. Huge grill. Completely different look than to the Lascola. Um, I'm not going to turn it around, but at the back, same as the Lascola, the Heritage logo. I'll post pics of the binding posts so you can see them. I'm afraid to scratch my floors. This beautiful big roll. Let's take this off. There we go. So, same as on... Let me see. Can you guys still see? Okay. So, same as on the La Scala, we have a 15-inch driver. But instead of it being a horn-loaded 15-inch inside the cabinet... It is a traditional 15 with three big ports at the bottom. So essentially a box speaker. We have the horn loaded mid range and the horn loaded tweeter. So slightly different to the Scala. I would almost say a smaller version, a baby brother of the La Scala. So I'm excited to see or to hear how these sound. Very excited because I'm hoping it fills that little gap and then maybe next i can be lucky enough to get my hands on a jubilee i don't believe there's a jubilee in south africa yet and if it is it's going to be like a million rand set of speakers now touching on that these are almost half the price of the la scala the la scalas were 451,000. These are 250, 250 something thousand. I'll post the price there. Um, also, the specs, they dig down deeper because of the ported base. I think this goes down to around 30 hertz, whether the scholar is around 50 hertz. So, this in theory should have the base that I want and still have that live sound that you want from Eclipse Heritage speaker. Guys, so stay tuned for me, um, for the video of me testing this. As you can see, also the Bowers are up now. Um, I started listening to them. I'm not going to spoil it. So I'll save it for the video. Okay, till the next one, guys. Guys, new day and we are ramping things into overdrive today. So um, a bit of a departure from the previous Bentley video. Now we are going to where you want to end up when you've had all the speakers you can imagine okay in come the clips cornwalls so i'm working my way through the heritage lineup as you guys know i had the la scholars and now i have the cornwalls um so the unboxing you would have seen before this these are in the beautiful black veneer finish i would have loved to have the walnut but i always end up for some reason having the black um and I love a black speaker, but as soon as you come to heritage stuff like this, a bit of color is nice and having the walnuts or the distressed oak is very cool. But I think the black will always be the biggest seller. 
and that is why I think I'm always getting black ones coming up for sale. So, okay, so this set is phenomenal. Um, who are these for? Everyone and not for everyone. They are high efficiency speakers. If you've ever listened to high efficiency speakers, they have their pros and their cons. They don't take a lot of power to get going. You can get them going with minimal amounts of power, but they do need good amplification. If your amplification is not up to par, it's going to show. It really does show. So um, I've played with a few different amps on these, and that brings me to my biggest point on these. I sat here yesterday. Um, I listened to them for a while before we did the Bentley video. And only after that video, I could move them into their proper positions, which on these and on the Lascalas are the same. Toed in exactly in the corners. Um, and man oh man did that change. Positioning on these are absolutely key. If you do not have them positioned correctly, they're going to sound crap. But as soon as you have them positioned correctly, they are wonderful. In comes amplification. I have the Retail S14 in for demo. So I used that first. Absolutely sublime. The video on that is coming soon. Um, I just need to use that for this and for the um, Bowers and Wilkin video that's coming after this. So I'm using that. So I listen to songs. I eventually called my wife. I said, sit down. Because she absolutely loved these speakers on Friday. Um, I, never, I never fell in love with them that much. But it was all about the positioning. As soon as I moved them out to the corners. And I don't tow them in as much as all the other guys say. Um, I like the tweet to be slightly passing my ear and not hit me straight on as you can see the placement now but what that gave me and why I called my wife I listened to Stairway to Heaven and as you guys do know that song it starts off with your guitar to the one side then the instruments come in on the other side and then all of a sudden the vocalist appears smack bang in front of your face with a 3D-esque sound that I could not believe. So I went, I called, I said, sit down, listen to this. I said, you're no longer listening to a recording. That is the stage. There's the guitarist. There's the, the drummer. There is the artist singing in front of you. That is the experience I got. And it was so mind blowing as of something I've never heard before. Now, keep accounts, I've heard some big speakers, as you guys know. These, for me, trumpets. Um, I prefer these to the Lascalas, but only because I think of my listening environment. I don't know, the Lascalas, they were great, but I never had that bass. But that also being said, these do drop down lower. So, if you like your bass, this is the one to rather go for because it's a sealed, not a sealed, it's a boxed 15 inch enclosure with ports at the bottom like you would get on a subwoofer. We on a Scala is a completely horn loaded 15. So it's never going to dig down to where this can go, but it is a much cleaner base. So I would say that the Scala is more for the purest audiophile that listens to a lot of orchestra recordings, um, very fine detail stuff. And if you need a sub there, a more bass there, you need to add a sub. Where on these, I, I felt no need for a sub. Those two 15 inch high efficiency drivers, they pound. They really pound, they, they smack you in the chest. And then the mid range and the top end is very close to the Scala like. Not exactly. The Scala has a bit more up top and it is more refined, but at half the price, hats off, Cornwall. These retail for 250,000 South African Rand and the Cornwall, oh, the Lascalas were 450,000 South African Rand. So more or less half the price for these. Um, and if I had to put my money down, and I did, I would buy these. Um, they are just more my flavor. Now, back to the amplifier. The S14 powered these phenomenally. I felt no need for anything else. The onboard DACs, the amplification, everything phenomenal. So 
that needs to go back soon. So I put that off. I thought, let me go back to my traditional setup that I have here. And this is sort of where I'm going to, is a lot of us think that the technology and receivers, especially when we partner them with power amps, are, you know, more or less the same as what you get with a stereo amp. So why bother getting a stereo amp? Guys, let me tell you, things have not changed. A stereo amp, if you are listening to stereo music, is still the way to go. And uh, my kit is no slouch by any means. Moran Cinema 50, Moran's 8 channel power amplifier. Bi amplified, two of those. I tried bi amp and single, not a big difference. Um, I could not get that sound stage again. I could get the instruments coming from that side and from this side, but as soon as the vocalist comes in, I do get a sensor image, but not the way I experienced with the Rotel. The Rotel really floored me, putting that artist there in a 3D soundscape where my brain had to physically tell me there's no audio coming from that center 10 times in a minute. Where as soon as I popped over to my old setup, it was like, yeah, it sounds good, but where is that thing that I heard? And I thought nothing changed. The speaker position didn't change. My wires didn't change. My kits actually got more expensive, but my audio was not there. To such a point that I now need one of those because I can't live without it. So I'll cover more on this in my next video. I quickly just want to compare this and the Moran Cinema 40N. I had them both, but I want to hear it again. I want to see if the Morans can give me what that gave me. And that's going to make up my mind which amplifier I'm going to be buying. But one of those I need, because it's one of those things, and all of you guys watching would know, as soon as you've heard something, you can't unhear it. And I can't live without it. I just cannot. Um, now, the next thing I want to hear is an Eclipse heritage thing. So on the Bowers and Wilkins, I will be doing the same test again to see if it replicates the same scenario or is it different? It might be a heritage thing because I'm telling you guys, you've never had a finicky speaker like any Clips heritage product. Um, they, want, they want correct placement. They want correct amplification. Um, and it's not like the most expensive amps. It's just some of them work, some of them don't. Like in this case, the S14 is brilliant, brilliant. Where my Moran's integrate of my Moran's receiver and power amp, not so much. It's good by any means. If someone hears that that's not been exposed to some things, you won't know the difference. But I heard it yesterday, and I cannot unhear it. So I need that. Um, okay, guys. So let's let's carry on with this. Let me show you what these look like under the covers. Look, they're never going to be the prettiest thing. I mean, it's a, it's an old traditional style speaker. So um, me and my wife both decided covers go back on because they actually look nice with the covers on. Without that, they look like a old speaker that you sort of slap bang, made in the garage and there's your boom box. And that's not what they are. These are refined as you would not believe. People normally think that clips is shouty up top. These tweeters are so refined and can be so laid back. Um, at low level volumes, it is, it's mesmerizing. It is so silky smooth. Only when you start upping the volume because they're so efficient, they get honkingly loud for a massive size room. But in my size room, size room, I found myself low level volume, everything was perfect. Highs were perfect, detailed, airy, bass was nice and tight, mid range was there. Um, honestly, the best listening experience that I've had ever, ever, genuinely ever, but only of the combo I had here. So that is why I can't wait. And I reached out to her mation. Alan is going to see if you can get me the 40N in again. Just to quickly, I just want to plug it in. I know what I'm listening for. If I can replicate that sound. I don't know where to go, which one to buy. I love them both. And I don't want to say too much on that because I want to cover that in the Retail video. So I'll save that for the Retail video. Um, so we can compare those two apples because they are basically the same product in the same price doing the same thing. So we'll cover that. Back to these. I'm going to play some demos. I'm going to play some demos on the S40. Then I'm going to do it on the Marantz. Um, 
let me know guys if you can hear what i'm talking about so what we're listening for um i can't play stairway to heaven because they're going to demonetize the video i'm going to have to and that's the one i want to play i'm going to try with the song i always play and see if that works um let's see i'm going to experience this with you guys i'll play it i'll come back to the front and we can talk about it so let me quickly set that up okay guys so here we go so firstly we have the Moran Cinema 50 running to the power amplifier, running to the corn walls. Um, here we go. So I stood at the back now listening to this song, playing on the combo. It sounds good, but it's not magical. Um, it's not it's not hitting all those little triggers for me that I'm used to or what I heard yesterday. So I'm quickly going to swap over to the Rattel. Um, all I'm doing is just going to change the wires and then let's do that same test again and see if we can hear any differences on highs, mids and bass. And I don't know if you guys are going to be able, it is a stereo mic, but I don't know if you're going to be able to get that sensor image. I doubt it. It's something you do really need to experience in real life, but let's see how far we can get. Okay, guys, so here we go. Rattel S14 test 2. guys come on and you know stuff like this actually bugs me because and i know most of us feel like this in this hobby i have spent a lot of money and it's not doing what something half the price costs um really really bugs me really bugs me but that so that just shows even in the day and age where we've come with technology there's still no replacements for a proper stereo integrated setup. Um, receivers just can't do what these things do. They just cannot do it. 
if you aren't that hard up on it and you got yourself a nice set of bulks and you know a nice set of bentleys or whatever you find with a stereo or whoever um, receiver it's going to do what you want but as soon as you get to this level you need to step up your game or if you're passionate about stereo you need to step up your game receivers are no longer where it's at it's just not and i can't even tell you it's close this is huge it's it's a huge difference it's more than double everything bass response um time alignment um treaters mid-range soulfulness um it's just not there on that and i tried all the modes i tried calibrated i tried pure i tried pure direct it just does not give it to me <sighs> and it's 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 irritating because now i need to buy another unit because i need that sound in my life um guys yeah so that's 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 it from me for ranting um if you want to experience perfection get yourself a set of clips here is and well um, i say heresies because i might get them in next but any heritage product so far is absolutely mind blowingly good mind blowingly good um but to throw a spanner in the works i've got something coming up next which is completely opposite to this but they still stand toe to toe and i think that has divided the audio world forever and i want to try and finally put a not that you're going to put a stop to it but i want to put a cap on it and sort of place these two in their boxes but you'll have to wait for the next video to see what that is all about and that also had my brain racking on friday um, so as soon as i get these off the pedestals those are going on and then i'm going to do all of this again sit here for hours for you guys to tell you what i think is best but still it's only what i think is best because opinions differ from audiophile to audiophile um, and what's good for me might not be good for you so that is why i always encourage come and do these listening sessions before you make a purchase um, like i wouldn't say that's exactly a mistake because that is that is perfect for a home theater setup but not for a stereo setup so this room unfortunately has dual purpose i've got my other cinemas this is the only room where i do stereo as well so kits as you can see by all my wires kitchen <coughs> apologies kitchen moves in and out frequently and a lot so i also can't get too attached because i need to swap around a lot but to date my little board that i still need to do i think for me these top out the la scholars ever so slightly not about the money just about my listening preference and these are also difficult to set up because they're wider they, they they're, they're not deeper but they're wider so in a sense they're a bit bigger but not as deep but both of them are painstaking to to get into position um they are big they are heavy guys i hope i covered everything in this it feels like i'm missing something but um we did the demo i talked about everything good about these um there's nothing bad about them. You can actually use these for home theater as well because they do have that base, um, which was lacking a bit on the La Scala. And partnering up, again, this shows you not power thing because the Marantz power amplifier did not bring out that base the way that the integrated Rattel does. So again, that is much less power. So everything is less, less power, less money but better so it's not about how much you spend it's making the wise um well i wouldn't say wise it's trial and error because there's no book that tells you do this do that do that this is trial and error so if you're ever going to get these speakers you are going to be playing around a lot with different combos and i've yet to have a valve amp apparently valves make them even better um but I've never been a valve guy, but I think it's time that I actually start dipping my toe into some valves and get away from the class A, class A, B, and class Ds um, and go valve. But we'll see. Um, I'm, still, I'm still learning a lot in this field as we go. I'm expanding my horizons, learning more. So we'll get there, guys. Hope you enjoyed this video. Please, again, like and subscribe. Share as far as possible so we can get more products in. It gives me more leeway and weight with the guys when I need to get products in because they also want their products 
tested and advertised. So please like, subscribe, and share. Like, subscribe, and share. And stay tuned for the next two videos to come. Cheers, guys. Bye. Guys, I quickly wanted to give you another perspective on what this sounds like. Because I know you guys watch me and many times I say this is the best and that is the best and now this one is the best. And it just sounds like same, same, another day. So, Michael, some of you might know him. He's my main installer on site, but he also helps with a lot of cinema setups. And when I have something nice, I bring him in, bring him in ask him to come and have a listen. So I did exactly that now. So I want him to explain to you what he experienced on these on the Retail S40. Michael? Yeah, so basically, um, when they played it for me, um, you know, on last week Friday, uh, but it obviously it wasn't set out as it's what it's meant to be. Um, and I, like I much chose another speaker above these. Yeah, let's not mention the other speaker yeah. yet, but it is a speaker that's half the price, but your Michael preferred them to the Cornwalls. So then today, Monet called me in and said, no, come listen again. He's put them, he's placed them in the proper positions and um, listening to it in, in their positions on, on the, the Rotel, um, it was honestly next level. Um, the, the sounds that it creates, like I actually felt like an idiot because I actually looked up to see where the sounds were, you know, like maybe there was another speaker playing or, you know, but it, it wasn't. It was just the, the pure... Yeah performance of the speaker which was which was next level and then uh, th then when they changed the the amps he, he put the marantz on and that's the one i told you guys that i'm not happy with the, how it's how it sounded yes so he put the marantz on and it like the experience i experienced with the rotel compared to the marantz was completely different so so the best way of describing it is and we said talking about this afterwards because as soon as I saw Michael look up, I jumped and said, what, what, where is it coming from? Um, but it's exactly that. When you put it on my, my normal receiver, it sounds like you're listening to two speakers. But as soon as you pop over to the Rotel, now you are there in front of the stage and you can pinpoint where every artist is. And after that, we even popped over to one of the songs. Um, is it, oh, I'm going to kick myself now, the artist. Um, 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 nah. we'll put I'll post it, I'll put it down here somewhere. The way where she and the male artist sings, and I said, Now listen to this. Now the artist is going to move from the center, but not all the way to the side, just slightly off, as if they're standing doing a duet. It is flipping phenomenal. You like, you literally like experience the stage in front of you where you, you see them playing in front of you. Yeah. It is, it is actually yeah. next level. So I just wanted to bring someone else in <laughs> just to convey this experience because it's not something you can, you can, you need to be here to experience it. Definitely. And I, guys, if you are interested in something like this, really come and listen to this while I have the Rattel. Uh, I'm trying to make a deal on getting one in, um, but it's going to be that or the Morantz, but I want to test the Morantz again first. But yeah, so that's for another day, but yeah, just wanted to convey this point to the absolute team. Okay guys, cheers, bye. Cool.